Hi, this is Aaron from Sibling Rivalry, and today I'm going to be doing a follow-up video on the King Rune 3D printer. A machine that can make copies of almost anything. So I initially purchased one of these printers about two months back now and I promised at the time that I was going to do a follow-up in the coming weeks and technically I guess this is the coming weeks. So I've had a bit of time to use this printer and I've actually purchased a second printer uh, the, of the same printer design and I generally speaking I really like this printer. So it's just a standard FDM printer, standard Cartesian. Out of the box it works which is something that's a little harder to say about some really bargain basement printers, especially the price range that this came in at. The only issues that I've had with it were squaring up the X and Y axis, or actually the Z and the Y axis. That just required loosening a few nuts and bolts and retightening them and just squaring everything up the best that I could and then making sure that everything was square with the bed. The best way to do that, to make sure everything's square, is you would tighten down these thumb screws. Oop, chunk of plastic fell out. <laughs> you can tell that this has been used recently. So you tighten up those uh, adjusters, or like thumb screws, so that it is at the maximum tightness. So essentially this upper build plate here is in a fixed location as tight to the actual carriage as possible and then you would move down the extruder to each corner the same as what you do for leveling and then from there it'll give you an idea of the squareness or the trueness of everything relative to that bed and then you can just loosen up and tighten everything as you need so like I mentioned in the previous video about this printer it has a few really cool features. It has an assisted bed leveling feature, which essentially on the touch panel, you select that option and then you select which corner you want to do it. It essentially has a set of different locations that you can check the levelness at. And you press those, everything homes and then moves to that location. And then you just adjust this so that it's the correct, the bed is the correct distance from the nozzle itself. Another cool feature that this has that I don't think I mentioned in full in the previous video is it actually has a filament runout sensor here. So this isn't absolutely necessary for printing like with some printers. You can actually bypass it just by feeding the filament directly into the extruder there. But if you start the print with the filament fed through this runout sensor, as soon as you run out of filament or there's a jam or something to that effect, the printer will pick up on that and it'll actually pause and raise the head and cool down a little bit. It's not like a huge difference. So it'll cool a little bit so that it doesn't melt your print and it'll allow you to go in and do the maintenance that you need to do. So switch out the filament. You can also use this to do filament switches on command if you're using scraps. So you can put in little bits of filament like this one here, which I just clipped off the spool and you could just feed through that until it goes past the sensor and then the system will pause you feed in another scrap and because it's got a little Bowden extruder you have a bit of uh, play with that so you could actually do multicolor prints if you play with that well enough another cool thing that this printer has is this flex bed which I showed in the camera mount video that we just did so we've got a link down below for that video and well, I'll actually link down below where you can buy a set of these because you can actually, even if you don't have the King Rune printer, you can buy these which are a standard size and it comes with the magnetic mounting plate and the flex plate with the print surface on it. And you can use that on any printer, which honestly it's an amazing upgrade from having to remove like a glass plate or an aluminum plate and then chip away at the print to get it off in some situations. Uh, the touch panel that I mentioned before is really handy. 
like honestly it's just really straightforward interface it does have a few options that i want to look into in the future and i might get back to you on that and the motherboard in here i actually opened up one of these printers and looked at it the motherboard itself has an option for upgrading to wi-fi so you can throw in a i believe it's an esp 8266 module and the system will actually detect that and you'll have Wi-Fi capability so you can send your G-code to the printer over Wi-Fi. One issue that I've had with one of these printers out of the two that I've bought, the power jack here can come a little loose and sometimes it's a result of the actual power supply, like the plug on the power supply itself comes loose. Other times it seems to be this here, the foil inside of it, like little contacts, aren't making proper contact. So after a while of printing, it will jostle the printer a little bit and then it'll lose contact and then the printer will restart, which is really frustrating because it doesn't count that as a power loss in some situations. Like a full power interruption, it actually has print recovery, which is another cool feature but when it does that little jostling thing, it's just kind of like a brownout, and it really doesn't know what to do with that. I've had to cancel prints about halfway through. When we were actually printing the tripod mounts, I had to switch printers because the one that I was using initially just kept crashing every five minutes. So I would start filming the video and the time lapse, and then it would crash as soon as I sat down. So. Yeah. Uh, other than that, this is a pretty standard Cartesian printer. Like I said before, it's a great value for what you're getting. It's got this precision ground rail for the y-axis. The linear rollers for the Z and the X are amazing. Uh, like I said before, you just need to do a bit of adjustment out of the box. It does print fine out of the box as soon as you square it, but your parts won't be dimensionally accurate until you do a proper squaring procedure with all of the axes. Uh, but like I said before, the price is amazing for this. Even though it has gone up a little bit, I believe it's about $40 more on Amazon than it was when I purchased it. It's around $200. Uh, it's like $197 or something like that when it was $157 when I initially purchased it. So still a great value considering all the features that it has and i would definitely say to buy one if you are in the market for a small to medium sized 3d printer that you want that just works after a little bit with minimal tinkering i should say so that about sums up the printer here we might do some more stuff in the future with this we're definitely going to be filming some more videos based around the 3d printer so stay tuned for that uh, please like if you like this video or like any of our other videos. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, concerns, yada yada. And please subscribe and ring that bell notification so you get notified whenever we upload a new video. And yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great day.